Hey guys, so it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I had surgery today, and I can't sleep right now, so I figured I'd make a video, right? So, what I wanted to do, I have a different pink shirt on than usual, just wanted to point that out, I have more than one shirt. What I wanted to talk about is communication with um, your children, spouse, family, boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever about mental health. Julian has uh, severe anxiety and um, an undertone of depression where he doesn't understand why he feels sad. And um, it's something that I open, I openly talk to about him. I have um, CPTSD. Before that it was just PTSD. Um, I have severe anxiety disorder, and I, um, I've suffered from depression. I'm very lucky that it does come and go. It's not an everyday occurrence or thing. Um, and when I do feel it, I'm able to work, work my way out of it. And that came with a lot of, um, self-care and work I did on myself just to figure out how to function best. Um, we both go to a counselor. Um, as soon as I realized how bad he was doing, I got him the help he needed. Um, I put him in a group with kids that have like issues that he could communicate with. Um, unfortunately, the first counselor and group that we were with, which I really loved, and it was for um, kids that are considered indigo children, crystal children, that have maybe a different mindset, and not everybody knows how to work with you know, empathetic kids and, and whatnot. And the counselor that we had was great. She got it. She understood it. Um, she's actually my Reiki mentor and um, an, an amazing worker. But we were too far away. And it was becoming harder and harder to get him there. I was in and out of the hospital. I was sick. Um, it, it, it just became hard. So we, we had to stop. Um, he did get his Reiki train in there, though. He was Reiki 1, and um, now that I am a Reiki Master 4 with uh, the second half, my, my um, class needs to be, okay, whatever, it doesn't even matter. So anyway, so um, in school, he has always had group counseling um, from kindergarten up until now. He's going to sixth grade. Um, I don't know if they have been sixth grade, but I know that he has a counselor that he will check in with once a week. Um, I have to reread his IEP because things were changed. But anyway, um, he's always had self-esteem issues. He's no, and I've worked my hardest to build him up, but sometimes just hearing it from your mom, who you feel needs to say it, is different than feeling it yourself. So, um, he can say the words, you know, I am, well, now I'm getting tired. <sighs> I am amazing. I am worth it. But he doesn't feel it. So, I took it one step further now. You know, we moved, we're settled. Excuse me, got him a counselor with the pandemic last year. It got increasingly worse. Um, Julian needs to be on a schedule, he needs to, he needs to know what comes next. Um, it's something I've done with him since he was born to let him know, okay, we're leaving daycare. We're going to go home. This is what happened for dinner. We're going to pick up your dad from the train station. We're going to, I would go through it with him. And I kind of did that for more for my own sanity so I can sort things out. And I used to, I 
in the beginning of it, I blamed myself. If I wouldn't have started that, then he wouldn't be like that. But this is his personality. This is who he is. So he works on consistency. He works best on consistency in the schedule. And when we first started homeschooling, he wanted the day to be just like school. And I tried my hardest. Um, there was a lot of difficulty. I don't really get common core math. We watched videos, which he, you know, he got him more anxious. And it, it didn't work. And the teachers were like, don't even worry about it. Like, this is not a time to be arguing about math or whatever. And I agree. Very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. But as the schedule and, you know, I couldn't keep up with what he would do in school because that's not what was assigned for the day or, you know, what, whatever it was. And the anxiety became even worse. So we figured out a different way to do it that worked for us. And I got him right into counseling. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, um, most counselors had a waiting list of a year, um, didn't take insurance, and I couldn't afford to pay out of pocket. Um, I couldn't afford to pay out of pocket as often as I would have liked him to go. If I had no other options, then it just would have been, um, you know, not a weekly thing. Finally found someone that actually works with the school district, not in the school district, but with them on the school grounds, like everything. She's amazing. Julia knew her from school. Um, when he would have a breakdown in class or whatever, she would be there to, to help him. She is amazing. She also ran groups that were not covered by insurance, but you know, it's the one-time fee and you're done for six weeks. And um, she made him part of a um, big buddy, little buddy program, which is amazing. And um, we made the decision to put him on medication because the anxiety was not lifting. And he was having more problems in school. He was having meltdowns at home that um, were scary for both of us. It's something I've never dealt with before with him. When he was younger and he would get upset, I taught him meditation. I taught him about timeouts, that he can put himself in a timeout. He can let me know I need my privacy, you know, whatever it was. And that was no longer working. So um, after talking to the counselor at school, the private counselor, um, his pediatrician, that's what we decided to do. It's something that took me a while to forgive myself for because I don't feel kids should be medicated or I didn't feel kids should be medicated and I felt like I failed horribly. Um, but there was an amazing improvement of um, the meltdown stopping and the destruction of his room stopping and issues in school being not as bad still there but not as bad and him not crying and not crying as much um, but his sadness and a lot of the anxiety was lifted and while doing that of course we worked on how to change things around you're in a bad situation how do you change it or um, appropriate reactions to things, which is one of the things in his group that they worked on, and I continued it at home. Uh, eventually, I finally got a call back from someone I called last year, um, a couple months ago, that I had put Julian on the waiting list, and they have a group for school age kids his age that starts in September, which he's a part of. Um, and he sees someone else there too, and excuse me. And now they regulate his medication because I feel better about someone who went to school specifically for this taking over. 
rather than the pediatrician. This pediatrician is amazing, but um, she's going by what we tell her and what the school tells her. This person actually sits with him every month, talks to him about how he feels, um, side effects he might be having, things like that. So Julian and I have a very open dialogue about everything. The only thing that I was not honest with him about is things like the tooth fairy, the Easter Bunny. And once he decided he didn't believe, I was like, yeah, okay, you know, it's not, it's not real. But there's nothing else that I hold back from him. Um, some things maybe I put in kid terms because it's inappropriate, but uh, mental health is not something that I've ever been quiet about. You know, in our family, we have an extensive, um, we have an extensive amount of mental health issues, um, severe to not so severe. We have addictions, uh, people that have food addictions, um, substance abuse addictions, um, with food addictions, there's um, binge eating, and there's also bulimia, and um, and whatever, alcoholism, and drugs. It, it's in the family. And I mean, not just like, you know, our immediate, but uncles, cousins, whatever, it, they're all there. And I don't hide it from him, because he needs, he needs to understand why these people... Um, I don't want to say we're acting that way, but like we went to uh, an outing and a cousin of mine was so drunk and Julian was asking me, like, like, what's the deal? And I told him and he needs to know that addiction runs in the family. You know, I believe in addictive personalities. I didn't know my grandfather was an alcoholic until he died of cirrhosis of the liver, and I didn't really understand what that was. And once it was explained to me, I was like, oh, I never noticed that he was drunk before. I never noticed it. So um, the fact that he noticed it, I, I wanted him to understand. You know, I've also been reading a lot of things in children that have, you know, anxiety and depression and whatnot sometimes do turn to... Um, drinking and drugs, which, you know, it's, it's an outlet to not have to feel and think. Um, so I want him to be aware that, you know, these are things that we shouldn't be doing. There are other ways to handle things. Um, I've talked to him about my own, um, stay at a hospital just because I was unable to cope with things going on in my life at that time, it was, uh, it was mind blowing for me. And I actually even wrote a book about it. Um, so I, I wanted him to understand that this is not something that he should be ashamed about, which he is. When he would go to his dad's, he didn't want to bring his medicine because he didn't want his dad to know he was on medicine even though it was something that him and I, his father and I discussed before, you know, the medicine, before getting him on it, you know, um, co-parenting isn't always easy, but it's always necessary. So, you know, it was something that was discussed, but he was embarrassed. And I had asked him, you know, if you had something wrong with your arm or, you know, when he was born, we talk about that he had two holes in his heart and they, they closed up on their own and he didn't need surgery. We were, incredibly, incredibly lucky. So, um, you know, if you had the holes, would you take medicine? And he's like, absolutely. You know, it's my heart. And I'm like, well, you have a chemical imbalance in your brain and the medication is needed to help fix that gap. I always think of it as, you know, two ends of whatever, of tubes or veins or I don't know, whatever and they're just not together. So you need this to link them. And that's what helps you. And I explain that to him and he gets it and he understands. I show him the medication I take. He understands. And to my surprise, other people in the family that are on medication came out and 
addressed it with him on what they're on, why they take it, how they were before they took it, how they feel about it now, and trying so hard to get rid of the stigmatism of it all because it's so real and it sucks so bad when you're feeling ashamed of this is how I was made. This is this is this is my chemical makeup. This is this is me, you know. I used to think because I went through such abuse as a child that that's why I had depression and anxiety and whatnot. And of course, a hundred percent it's part of it. But seeing him struggle the way I did at his age and even younger, my you know, my dad died when I was seven and a lot of other things transpired at that time. And I thought that, you know, everything was because of that. And to see him struggling, and I know that he goes through certain things um, that, you know, I'm not going to talk about. And I realized this is just our family history. This is the way we were born. This is the way God made us. And um, every journey is really hard um, dealing with different things you know whatever your journey is there's always going to be setbacks and battles and everything so this is the journey that we were given and we just have to figure out how to navigate our way through it one of the ways of doing it is by talking talking about um, what it feels like to not be okay talking about not being okay talking about hurting and in the same time, talking about your happiness and talking about what makes you giggle and what makes you proud. Um, what things would you like to change? We have these conversations often because, number one, he needs to know that he's not alone in feeling like this. He's not alone. Even if I didn't understand, he's not alone in it. You know, we are... We are each other's, I don't even know the word. I feel like for his whole life, it's been him and I, you know, um, everything has been him and I, and not to say that other people haven't played a part in his life. Of course, you know, that's stupid to even think that they haven't, but it, you know, we've always I don't know, whatever. We've always done everything together. You know, if I was going someplace out to dinner, whatever, he was there with me. Um, when he was in daycare, I would go and take my lunches so that I can have lunch with him at daycare because it was on the grounds of my job. If he had anything going on at school, I made sure I was there. Um, even when I was sick, I remember his dad and I going up. I just came from the hospital. Um, had a really, really bad surgery just a lot and he was having a school presentation and we made sure we were there and he was crying because he couldn't believe that they had, they got a wheelchair for me and he couldn't believe that I was in a wheelchair and I was there um, I'm always present and I will always be present in his life and this is no different this is no different than science fair this is no different than his first time riding a bike. This is no different of him learning how to swim. Um, it's a part of his life. It's an event in his life when he realized, hey, I'm, I'm not okay and I need help. And um, I just want to encourage all parents, grandparents, whatever, whoever you are in a kid's life, to be honest about it. And even if you don't understand it, try to. Um, educate yourself on it. Don't don't put them person down um, because of it. And sometimes they just need to talk. They don't want a response. They just want you to listen. They're not asking you to fix things. They're letting you know this is what happened today. This is how I felt. Uh, sometimes Julian and I will do it where, okay, this is what happened. How can I change my response next time? Perfect. Sometimes we write it down so that we can organize, you know, just 
do a brainstorm, get it all out, and then see what actually works for the situation. Um, I spent, you know, we, we spend time on it. It's not like, hey, you know, feeling crappy. Okay, you hope you feel better or some shit like that. Like, it's a real conversation that we have. Um, I feel like it's not okay to pretend that it's not happening because all that's going to do is fester within him or whoever. And it's going to come out destructively, whether it be um, behaviorally of, behaviorally, I don't think that's a fucking word, but if through their behavior of um, acting out, getting in trouble, fighting, hurting themselves, cutting themselves, or drinking, doing drugs, hanging out with maybe different people that um, give them something that, whatever, I don't fucking know, but um, having that open conversation is so important, it's so important to let them know that you are there for them, 100% judgment free, that your love does not, um, does not waver, your, your love isn't based on if you have depression or anxiety or a broken leg, your love is because you love this person unconditionally and kids need to hear that. Maybe you think that it's known, but not only do they need to hear it, but they need to feel it. They need to have it in ways that are unspoken, um, not by buying them shit, but if you see that they're upset silently, just give them that hug or making their favorite meal or something just to show that you're aware. Um, I don't know. That, that's all I kind of want to say is open up the discussion. Um, don't make it shameful. Don't make it embarrassing. Um, let yourself be uncomfortable having these conversations. It's okay to be uncomfortable and it's okay to let them know that um, you're a little unsure or you're a little uncomfortable, whatever. It's okay. Uh, I was very uncomfortable at first when I told him, um, you know, that I had went to a hospital. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed, you know. Um, you know no one came to visit me except my immediate family, my brother, my sister, and my mother. Um, and... Everyone tried to pretend like they didn't know, even though I wasn't hiding it. I mean, I wasn't screaming it from rooftops, but there was a lot going on, and I just mentally couldn't function. And um, if I publish my book, you can buy it and read all about it. Anyway, so I let him know I was embarrassed, I was ashamed, and I was uncomfortable. And he gave me a hug, and he just said, you don't, you, know, you don't have to feel like that around me. I love you. And well, Those are the same things he needs to know, you know. And I let him know, even if you feel uncomfortable about something, when you're ready, you can come talk to me, or you can write it down and give it to me, or you can just write it down and give it to yourself. And, or, you know, he has a counselor, and you can bring it to her. And... It's okay if I don't know about it, because if it's something where he's going to harm himself, she'll let me know. It's okay to feel. It's okay to feel all emotions. His thing was always that he was sad and he didn't know exactly why. He'd be like, you know, I'm sad, but I don't really have a reason. And I said, and he already understood what depression was, and he already understood how it feels inside, how much it hurts. Because depression hurts. Um, and I would say, sometimes are you happy and you don't know why? And he'd be like, yeah. Sometimes, you know, whatever. Do you feel mad and you're not sure why? Yeah. And I said, sad is the same thing. It's a normal emotion, to, excuse me, a normal emotion to feel. So I think it's important to have an open dialogue. This video has turned out to be longer than I expected partially because I ramble on way too much, but, uh, I'm not editing it, so, yeah, you're gonna watch it to this point, you're gonna watch it, if not, you're not, and you don't even know I said it, but 
have an open an open relationship um, communication because it's so important for a kid to know it's important for everyone to know that they're not alone and that they have someone in their corner but especially if it's your, your child or niece or nephew or whatever the way people rallied around him and you know not just immediate family or, or whatever um, but people that we have in our lives that understood and took the time out to and still take the time out to include him in things that I mean he would have been included in anyway but to make more of a special effort for him um, maybe more one-on-one -on -one time or um, an extra special sleepover with a friend. I don't know. I have amazing people, and I am grateful. I'm like so grateful because they're non judgmental. Julian had a breakdown at a friend's house. Mom is one of my best friends, kid is one of his best friends. And it was scary. It was scary for them. And it was scary for me to know that. He was not okay someplace other than in our home with me. So we have a great group of people around us, and um, not all kids do. So if you could be that person that allows them to be their safe place. And Julian and I used to go over that, who was a safe person to talk to. And, and whatever, and we still do that to this day. That was like six years ago that we, we discussed who the safe people are to talk to about things like this. And we still have our safe list today. And, um, cause not everybody of course has your best interest at heart as an adult. We know that as kids, they don't know that. Um, they don't always know what's appropriate, what's inappropriate, where to talk about things. Um, so he's, he's learned it and I'm happy to say that he's doing amazing. And um, he still has some anxiety, but I feel like it's normal anxiety. And I hate to use the word normal, in normal, unnormal, whatever. But like he's he's anxious about starting sixth grade and going to the middle school where you change classes. I feel like that's regular. You know, that's a regular anxiety that probably every kid, except for maybe a few that are just like go-getters. I don't know. I don't know. A few that maybe don't have that fear, although, whatever, that's another story. Anyway, um, so he's doing better. He is, he, uh, he's just he's so amazing. Uh, if you want to check out his YouTube channel, he's doing great things. The life of Julian. Um, his sense of humor is, I think, awesome. Um, maybe because it's kind of like mine and. I think my sense of humor is very funny, but he's, he, who he's becoming and who he's growing into. And I will say, I've always loved who he is as a person. Um, I've always loved his personality. I've always loved his soul and his heart, but watching him become more independent, is just freaking amazing. And the fact that we have such an open relationship and, and the flow of conversation is so easy. It's so easy. And that he knows he can come to me about everything. And sometimes it takes him two or three times to actually tell me what it, like what it is. Sometimes he just wants a hug. And then he'll come back and he'll tell me like what's going on. Because just because he's going to counseling, just because he has started medication, doesn't mean that shit's fixed. It's all still in there. And it's just something that will be there forever. I know, I live it. But it's also something that you learn how to, uh, to deal with, how to function. You learn that on this journey, on this path, you will always have a bump in the road. There are things sometimes that bring me back and I feel panicked, but I, I'm, some of it I'm still learning. You know, you never stop learning because once you say you're done learning, then, you know, you're a loser.
you're not a loser. But you're never done learning. If you think you are, you might be a loser. I don't, I don't know, because I don't know you. But anyway, um, there's always something to learn. And this has been a weird, hard, um, sad part of our relationship. Um, you know, when he, when he's not around, I cry over it. I did cry over it. Um, when it was going on, when it was happening, I put myself back in counseling so that I could be a better support system to him and a better mother and a better me because, um, counseling is fucking awesome. So... Um, I'm hoping, hoping that this somehow, I know I, I ramble, but I hope somehow it opens up your mind to thinking of discussing these things. I know that you think that kids are too young to understand, but they're not, um, or too young to feel these things. They're not, um, they're, they're not. So, um, let them, let them have you as an outlet, as a safe place, non-judgmental unconditional love. So manifesting motherhood, um, love, peace, and so much light to fill your world. Thank you for watching to this point.